question we're going to be looking at today is were we to vote on the dessert tomorrow, what would we vote? We have our six candidates. We have our six candidates. We have, I mean, of course, these are awfully drawn. The handwriting will also be equally awful, uh, but you know, bear with it. So our six candidates, and I want you to, to, to really internalize the nature of these uh, dessert candidates, are the grapefruit, the cheesecake, the chocolate cake, the ice cream, the strawberries, and the vanilla pudding. Okay? These are your six candidates for dessert. And the question is, what is the right way for this group to pick its dessert for tomorrow? Right? That is the big, big question. And people often are surprised that there are many, many different and with quite varying implications ways of determining this. Now, first thing first, yeah. if we can take a okay. marvelous ballot. <laughs> and I write, want you to write down your favorite dessert of these six. Of these six, which is your favorite? Right, A. Quite simply, the name of it at the top of your ballot. Yes. Do you have that? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Everyone write it down. Write down your most favorite of these six. Grapefruit, cheesecake, chocolate cake, ice cream, strawberries, and vanilla pudding. Your favorite of these six. Has everyone written down? Yeah. Okay. I'll trust you uh, in what you wrote. Who said grapefruit? Raise your hand. Who said grapefruit on the note? Okay. Who said chocolate cake on the note? Who said strawberry? Who said cheesecake? Who said ice cream? Who said vanilla pudding? Okay. Uh, for the purposes of illustration, I'll be voting chocolate. And now let's look at the system. Let's say this is a classical first past the post system. A simple system, essentially, of plurality voting, in which the item that is most favorite to most people is the one that is selected. Because this is the favorite of 4 out of 11, 4 out of the, uh, those available. If we're, for example, selecting a single winner, chocolate cake takes the seat. If, for example, we want to fill uh, three seats, three seats of the most favorite, Chocolate cake, yeah. cheesecake, and with some sort of tiebreaker, something between strawberries or ice cream that also gets it. Right? If we're going for a proportional system, essentially we're going to have about, it's 11 of us, so we're looking at a bit under 10% each. So we'll be having some approximately 35% of chocolate some uh, 30 something percent cheesecake and some smaller percentages of ice cream and strawberry, right? Now, that's what we get if we count it dozen. But let's say, so we have first pass post voting for selecting a single winner that will be chopped. But let's say that we're doing a runoff system with two rounds, right? So let's say the winners of round one, the two winners of round one, are chocolate cake and cheesecake, right? Those are the top two. And now let's have a runoff between these two. Of you, of us 11, who would prefer chocolate cake? We have four. Who would prefer cheesecake? 
one, two, three, four, five, the other six over here. So if we simply do the same system but in two rounds, with the second round having a vote between the two, we find that the winner changes. The cheesecake wins the round. Despite chocolate having the most people in favor. Okay? That's two. Let's look at number three. If we look at number three, we would uh, call it elimination voting. We would take the least favorite ones out of the equation. And we might reach a pretty similar result uh, to the other ones. Let's, first we would have a round of voting and saying, which do you like least? Uh, and seeing that grapefruit and vanilla pudding, we happen to know we're pretty low rated in the other ones. Uh, these would likely get eliminated. And of the others, I would then ask you, what do you like least? You'd all put in a ballot. The one that gets most ballots would be eliminated. This would likely, again, with so many of you uh, liking these two, be one of these two. But again, with elimination voting, the order might change because the psychology is completely different. It's what do you dislike that you're voting for. And therefore, when we end up with three of these, we might have chocolate not even ending up in the final two. Because even though four of you have it as a favorite, six of you might really dislike it. And it might come out of the race really soon. And then we might be uh, left with choosing between cheesecake and straw, and strawberry or ice cream before the end. Okay? So we have elimination voting, in which you constantly, each round of voting eliminates uh, another candidate that is least favorite. Okay? Now, give me, give me your ballots. Basically, on these ballots, you each express the option you support. So basically, we have equal representation, I mean proportional representation of your preferences within these ballots, right? Your opinions are represented in the proportion in which you chose them in these 10 ballots, right? So therefore, why isn't it simply the best system that, considering you gave the most chances to the things that are your favorites, I don't just take all of these ballots, and in order to determine the dessert for tomorrow, <laughs> just shuffle them and pick one at random. This ensures that the best chance of winning does go to the one you like the best, chocolate, but it also gives a chance to the preferences of the others. It also doesn't give any chances to the preferences that no one has. So why isn't simply picking a random ballot, having random ballot vote, there? Because it maintains the proportion, it does give everyone a chance for the one they opted for, and it doesn't it ensure that those that few opted for have minimal or no chances of coming in. That's an open question. Why isn't this is this a good system as well? I think it isn't because in effect it satisfies the, the minority rather than the majority of people. Mm -hmm. What about the others? Which one of these, for example, having the second round or not satisfies the majority or minority? Does the first one satisfy the majority? No? Does the second one satisfy the majority? Yes, no? It satisfies the majority. Well, the majority did choose cheesecake between cheesecake and chocolate. But then again, only three people said cheesecake is their favorite. So the majority of people won't be getting their favorite. Let's keep going. These are one ballot options. Um, then we have more complicated systems. We have the option of of a ranked voting system. Now, 
social scientists and uh, mathematicians tend to say that this is the, the better uh, system of voting, in which, take another set of ballots. I want you to write number one and put your most favorite one there. Number two, second most favorite. So on, number three, four, five, six. With six being your least favorite. And divide all these, rank them from favorite number one to least favorite number six. Everyone done? Yeah. One, two, six. Fold them and give them to me. So essentially, how this works in RAC voting is that you take whatever was a voter's we have six candidates, right? So we should give points. So what was so we should have six distinctions. So what was number one, their first pick gets five points. Their second pick, four points. So on and so forth. Their fifth pick gets one point, their sixth pick gets zero points. Okay? So what we then get is we add up the points. Essentially what we get by the end is by compounding all of these results, we keep going and have a fiber here, a four here, okay. a straw here, here, two here, and one. Is that a lot more information gets transmitted. If I add all of these, we will get scores with all of these, right? So if, for example, we're looking at the proportional election, in the previous one, in which it was a competition of favorites, in that parliament of desserts, uh, I think who was a grapefruit and vanilla pudding just would not have been represented at all. But in this system, because some of you placed some of these other than last, grapefruit and vanilla pudding would also get a percent because some of you do have them as second or third picks. Now in a ranked system of voting, you might have, for example, if you have, let's say, three candidates, you have a first candidate that is essentially, let's say, extreme in one political direction, a second candidate that is extreme in a different political direction, and a candidate that is moderate. In a system in which you vote for favorites, for example, it might make sense for them to actually have extreme strategies, because they're trying to get 50% plus one, going their way, or even like 30%, while the next one gets only 28%. And they would, they're satisfied, they just need 30%, while the next one gets 28%. But in a system in which you have ranked voting, the one that is least objectionable might be the one who wins, because in the case of 
uh, the extremists, yes, those that really like them will put them first, but everyone else might put them very close to the end. While this, for the other extremists, again, his fans will put him first, but everyone else will put him sort of last. While a moderate, somebody that tries to appeal to as many of the interests of uh, those they're running for, for example, might be looking to not get the first each and every time, but rather get consistent seconds and thirds. And in this way, in a ranked system of voting, the least objectionable vote might lead to a completely different result, might lead to a ranked result that simply gets us to neither chocolate nor cheesecake, but to something like ice cream, which although is the favorite of few, is the one least of you object to, most all or strawberries might be left again. Although, the very same one, um, let's put it, for example, like, could it all be strawberries considering the numbers so far? So, we're looking at, again, another system which might lead to simply the least objectionable dessert becoming what you have tomorrow. Although, a different system said chocolate is the best, a different system said cheesecake is the best. Another variant of ranked voting is you can have ranked voting with abstentions, which means that you just you can put your favorite, you can put your second most favorite, and you can abstain for all the others, essentially tying them for last place. Now, the problem with that system is it lets you manipulate the vote more. We have this phenomenon called vote splitting, essentially in which you want, you essentially give, it even happens in ranked voting, and it happens a lot in, uh, in uh, uh, classical uh, pluralistic, pluralistic voting, that you give, you vote, not for the candidate you like best, but for the candidate you think will beat the candidate you dislike. In many cases, because let's say you know you have we have X, Y, and Z, and uh, uh, X is bad, Y is very bad. Z is really the best, but has very low popularity and chances. Although you think Z is the best candidate, you will vote for X to ensure that Y doesn't win. Right? Does it make rational sense? It does, but is it an actual depiction or image of what is the best candidate? It's actually a snapshot of what is the best candidate of those that got into a position in which they are to be considered popular. That's what it truly is. The advantage of ranked voting is it will allow Z to get in by again consistently getting things like second and third places on ballots, even if X and Y get a lot of firsts. Okay. So that's what alternative voting is like. And then we have simply a um, approval vote. Let's do ballots again. And what you simply have to do is approve or disapprove of desserts. Put a one next to the desserts you approve of. And a zero next to the desserts that you simply disapprove. So one list all six, put a one next to the ones you choose that you do approve of. That can be six or none, or one or five, and a zero next to the ones that you simply disapprove of. So one and zero. This is also a system that is argued to be. Uh, very representative in saying, look, essentially we want the one that is approved by as many people as possible. And we don't want disapproved systems to get it, just because of the clash between them. high popularity candidates. When you're ready. That small one are done.
essentially what we're going towards is quite clearly Chocolate cake, one system said cheesecake, strawberry, we have ice cream. Again, just depending on how we determine the answer to the question by voting. Now, another system that, again, we won't do the math of, but can again lead to completely different results is rated voting. In rated voting, I would give you all ballots, you would list all six, and then you would give them a grade to how much you like them or dislike them from minus 10 to plus 10. Now what this system would result is, uh, you know, grapefruit might get a lot of minus nines because people that do hate grapefruit really hate it a lot. But people that dislike cheesecake don't dislike it that much, only give it a zero. And lots of people really love it and get it, give it a 10. And therefore, it's essentially rather than saying approved, disapproved, how approved, how disapproved, okay? So in a rated system, again, you could have a completely different results by giving ratings to each of the options. Now, last but not least, uh, well, not last, but what we can then have is wave voting, and of course, we want to also get cumulative. Okay, raise your hands if you're really passionate in general about desserts. You really care what's for dessert. You really want to have dessert a lot. Raise your hands if you're really passionate about dessert. Raise your hand if dessert is important to you. Okay, you five will be the gourmands. And because you care more about this issue, you're going to have a double. And you, the rest of you care less, you're going to have a single. Now, in weight voting, you may, for various reasons, because you want to prefer certain groups, because certain other groups uh, are more important, you can definitely influence what happens. And if we again vote with the votes of U5 counting for double, because you care a lot more about dessert, so why shouldn't your vote matter more, we again might get a very different result from these four, or any of these four results. Again, with the answer to the same question, what should we have for dessert tomorrow? With the addition, those that really care about dessert, let's listen to them more by giving them a double vote. So again, a whole new result by making sure we listen to a very specific group that has special interests with regards to the issue. Okay? In cumulative voting, what you essentially do is I would give you ballots, and you have 10 points. Divide the 10 points between these six desserts. You can give all 10 to chocolate cake if you're passionate about chocolate cake and that's the end all of everything. Or you might give two to grapefruit, two to strawberry, five to ice cream, and another one left over for vanilla cake. Again, this different <coughs> system of dividing points would lead us to very, very different questions. And now, having gone through all through this, the best and the, the, the most important question comes up. Which of these is the correct system for determining what dessert you should have? Which of these voting systems is the right one that gets us to the right result to what we should democratically decide? And why? Opinions? None of them. Why none of them? Is, is that 
that every, everyone approves the, the dessert or if your goal is to choose uh, the favorite of the majority? You're right that all of these have flaws, that naturally whenever a choice will be made, people that have, didn't get their choice will be disappointed. That, that's very, very true, very correct. Still, the hard question is, all of these are flawed, but which one is the best? Which one is closer to the true opinion of this group? Which system describes to us best what the true opinion of this group is? Yeah? Um, I... In, uh, for me, in England, we have first pass approaches, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. yeah. and we that I don't. I didn't in this context. I don't like it because it didn't. All the other people who didn't pick chocolate, they were just kind of ignored. They'd say you're not taking it into consideration. I kind of like the approval, the approval one, because then you have. Even if you like that, that might be your favorite. You can say, "Okay, I'm okay if this happens, though." So, yeah. but then again, you know, yeah. naturally, some would say, "Yeah, but you know, most people like chocolate as their favorite." And even when put made to choose between cheesecake and chocolate, this group said cheesecake is better. Despite these two things being truths, why is a system that gives you ice cream the best one? Because nobody objects. <laughs> But then again, it's only the favorite of two people. Other views. So let's vote for which voting system is best. By what vote we vote for? Now, so we have one for approval. Yeah. I prefer the ranked system because it shows not only preference but also levels of preference. But in a context which is not voting for your favorite dessert or voting for something which is really important, like parliamentary presidential elections. I would combine that with a middle voting system as to rank people based on the knowledge of politics because I believe that dictatorship with intelligence is the only way that true decisions can be made. So you would look for a rank plus weight system in which you yeah. have heavier weight on the vote of those more politically educated? Yes. Okay. Um, and do you think using that would how would you establish who are the, those politically educated would be my big question. Depending on the knowledge of the programs that the political candidates are proposing, depending on the knowledge of the political history of the country they're voting. Who test that? I believe that since most countries, or at least my country, has an independent committee that is in charge of running the elections and educated in running the elections, then they should as well be educated in, in politology well enough to create such a test. Right, but even if they're like perfect academics who are very aware, well aware of the, you know, the, the academic side of politics, is that truly the best voter, a voter that has the most knowledge, the most information? It's an open question, but... Yeah, yeah the problem is that most voters who are educated not to vote, which means that you also have to introduce obligatory voting and then it gets complicated, but... And what, you know, some would say is, Look, it's the poor that tend to uh, have to have a stake in politics, but also the poor probably have the least time and availability to get educated politics. So such a system, adding weight to those that to uh, those that are best informed, is likely a system that gives an even smaller percentage of vote to the poor and an even higher percentage to the rich because the rich have the tendency to be educated because they just have that possibility. And there's the, and there's that danger with uh, with that system. Would you say it's worth it? Would you say? I would well, because there's a problem because you say and it's true that the poor don't really have the time to be educated about politics. But then again, if they don't, how could they choose what's best for them today? Okay. Yeah. But, Which one? But oh, I like favorite with second round. Okay. But I like what he said. Uh, not only if you want to give way to some uh, to voters, it should be the ones that have more necessities because they are the ones who know what they need. Not the rich guy that lives in their mansions, but the poor guys who live in hoods and they can't do, they can't, they are not educated because they don't give them the possibilities. Most of the time, the country don't give them the possibilities to study. So why should they? 
like what, what, what I felt he was saying is that often these very, very uh, disenfranchised people are the very people voting for the bullies that will make their, their life worse because they're not informed enough. And that's what, what an arg such an argument could be made that, that yes, you're right that it's them that should be protected, but it, then again you could say it's them that tend to get manipulated into voting for the bad guys. So there's that. Yeah? I would disagree with the waiting, waiting because then um, people who are more educated tend to be richer, not necessarily vote, they would vote in their favor, and so they're in favor, so maybe someone that would have more benefits of people who are rich and less benefits of everybody else, of every other class that there is. Another variant that, that's discussed in some places is giving a way to vote to parents. Um, Parents in real life, in, in most legal circumstances, also represent their children, right? Also speak for their children, also have extra duties and burdens because of the humans that are their children. So one thing that's being discussed is if they get to represent their child and make legal decisions for them, why shouldn't they represent their child and make political decisions for their child until 18? So again, another thing that's often said is a weighted system in which parents have extra weight by representing their children. Again, that has very interesting implications and questions because on the one hand it does make some sense that as a parent you might, it might be logical for you to have more political stake, but then again what are the kinds of decisions that parents tend to vote for? Good, bad, so on and so forth. Other views, other systems you like. So, um, two rounds preferential voting, ranked, approval, some weighted implications. So the ranked system is the system no, no, in which no, 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 uh, ranked is the uh, being able to abstain. So oh, you can you can say yeah, yeah. number one, number two, and I abstain above the rest. But that just allows for more more vote splitting because you're refusing to express your preference between these four because you really want to maximize the chances of these two, and that basically gives you a less representative. Uh, answer than the ones who's ranked. People haven't told me their favorites. What, which one is your favorite? Ranked. Ranked? Because you get most information? Okay. And again, ranked didn't give you the dessert that everyone approves of. Didn't give you the dessert that is most people's favorite. And didn't even give you the reserve, dessert that is the favorite, the, the pick between the two most favorite. It gave you a different fourth result. Yeah. By taking all that information. Is this the right decision? The smallest number. Actually, the smallest number of people would, be, would not be satisfied with approved, but still ranked kind of gives you the higher preference. levels of preference. Okay. I would like to go with the second one. Mm -hmm. Second round. Because, like, it's among the best, like, the two best uh, which are chosen, and the voting was there not between those two. So. That would be a better choice because uh, many people like both of the choices, mm -hmm. but then if you ask the whole community, the best of the choice would be decided. All, because we saw that first chocolate cake got the highest votes, but then cheesecake, uh, because of the whole community, they voted more for the cheesecake. The, you know, like the ranked and the proof people said, yeah, but ice cream is the dessert nobody gets upset by, and strawberry is the dessert that overall preference seems to add up more. Why do you want cheesecake? Because you're essentially saying, let's give the choice to the people that, uh, that do have a favorite, and amongst these two favorites, let's pick the one that is least objectionable. So why is approval not better? Because you are essentially doing an approval system in the second round by picking between the two, voting for one of them. You're essentially saying approved is approved, approved is approved, approved is approved. What would you answer to the, the those that opt for approved in saying, look, the best idea is to have a president or a dessert that none of us are upset with, or rather than the one that is the favorite of the one? What would you answer to those? I think that the majority of the people, I think that like the favorite belong which would belong to the majority of the people would be a better choice because in the in an approval, even if you're fine with something. You, you can approve it, but that doesn't mean that you like it or like you're very good with it. You, uh, but on the other hand, uh, uh, in the second one, 
you can choose the best out of the best. So the best out of the those are favorite most often. Yeah, you're right. Other views, people who haven't said. Which one do you like? I think I like the rated one. The the rank? Uh, oh, the rated. rated. Okay. The one in which you actually give ratings with uh, with an degree. Why? Yes, because you can show if you like only one in a ranked one, you must uh, choose which one uh, you uh, don't dislike as much as the others. But here you just say which one you like, um, and then the second one, if you would have a second one. Okay. Which one do you like? Mm, I, I agree with uh, this girl. Which one? Uh, for for approval? Uh, no. Right. Why? So. I think it's better for me. Because you get to say the order of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sherman, which one do you like? Um. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Probably ranked is a better in the best system because it it, so it implies also expressing first preference, but it also implies expressing least preference. It's I think that expressing only preference is unfair because it simply does not represent the it does it actually doesn't represent the will of the majority. That's the weird part because when you vote for the first one, you're not really you're not really saying what your political beliefs are. It's sort of, when you have a rank, like it's especially in political choice, like it's, it's relevant in, it's not necessarily so relevant in uh, desserts, but it's more relevant in politics because in politics you have the chance to somehow create an average between the political beliefs in, in society. You, you get to a certain political perspective that's acceptable and sort of not horrible for anyone. So, but looking at rank in comparison to rated, why don't you then like rated? Because rated also fits what you just said. You could give minus six to this one, zero to that one, plus six to the other one. Between rank and rated, are you sure you prefer ranked? Well, the problem with rated is it allows for meta gaming. And splitting the boss. Especially, yeah. It, it, it can, like, if you're really, if you're really hardcore on something, you can just plus ten that minus plus, ten yeah, things. Minus ten, minus ten things that you don't really disagree with that much, but you just want to plus in your first. So the rank one forces you to express yeah. your actual and secondary opinions. Now, this is essentially what I want us to look at. We live in a context of democracy. We've taken democracy as the best system we can have. Yet at the same time. We can get very, very different results just by the difference in which we answer the question, fine, majority decision, but what is majority decision? And even when talking to 10 of you, we have five systems which you like. And of these others, like one or two are also here. So seven about of these 10 systems are, see, are definitely seeable as valid systems. And you know that's the weird thing, we often don't question how majority decision is recorded and, uh, and decided. But actually, there are huge implications uh, for these things. Very often, the reason why a uh, system of voting is pushed, and some of these systems, although they seem to make sense when we're discussing it, are virtually never seen in politics, is because, well, essentially, they don't fit the game plan of those that want to be elected next time. It just so happens that we function in a way in which the people that make the rules are, are also the people that will be competing by those rules in the next uh, election, in the next generation. So, essentially what I want you to leave with is when thinking of democracy, be aware that you know democracy is this compromise that we do need, but if we're going to say majority will, that's what we're going for by majority will, we have to be aware of all these implications of all these levels because we can get to very different expressions of will. We can get to four different results just by the way in which we're answering to the question. It's not even a different question. The question is always, what does there tomorrow? The different way of determining our will gets us different results. And last but not least, be aware that you know, the people that 
you will want to tell them, we want ranked voting parties X and Y. Well, X and Y might know that if ranked voting comes in, Z might get a better chance at beating them. So you can expect X and Y to say, no, 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 let us explain to you why ranked voting is bad, or why uh, approval voting is bad, or rating voting is bad. So essentially what I want you to leave with, often like for example in debates, it might be hard to get too much into the details of this, but sometimes it might be very relevant and important to the discussion you're having if you're aware of these systems. Look them up, there's a lot more to read about it. There are many mathematical implications, many uh, social science implications. Uh, it's very interesting. It's, it's uh, you know, there are a lot, even I gave you like simplified systems, but there are a lot more advanced algorithms. There are full algorithms that go into saying, let's do full sets of pairings between all of the candidates and make the decision of what would you pick, uh, which are essentially more advanced ranked systems in looking at specific pairs. What I want you to do is essentially be open to this idea that no, there is no given correct way of uh, determining what is majority will, and that how you collect the answer leads you to very different results, and it's therefore very important to ask yourself, what is democratic will truly? What is the point of democracy? Is the point of democracy to get the biggest favorites in? Is the point of democracy to get the least objectionable in? Is it someplace in between? What should democracy be trying to do? Should there be any weights, or should it be exactly one adult man, one vote? How it should it Ask yourself these questions. Be open to creatively looking at the motions you get in debating, and it, uh, be open to uh, work on these things as they have actual important implications on what you're talking about. Get informed on voting, how it works, how it could work, what are the implications, and um, yeah, all your questions. Any questions? Yeah. So th these systems can be applied to other forms of voting than just picking uh, candidates, right? Or does For it instance, sense? in direct democracy, if you're voting on an issue, you can also apply all these Absolutely. to vote. Or in parliament, when MPs are voting for laws, they can also apply different systems. Absolutely. And think about it in terms of how laws are built. Laws are typically built through saying, we have this amendment, this amendment, and this amendment. These three amendments are not compatible with each other. They vote for this amendment, yes or no. The second amendment, yes or no. The third amendment, yes or no. Then the one that got the fruit mode gets put into the law. So on and so forth. But at the same time, throughout building laws, throughout picking representatives, throughout directly deciding things, these systems could be used in determining answers. For example, oftentimes, yes, the question is simplified to should we drive a, three, a freeway through neighborhood X? But often the question is, actually much bigger. It's the question, how should we resolve the problem of too much traffic in the center of our city? And that could have freeway through neighborhood X, that could have, let's build a belt around the city, could have the answer, let's put tolls around the road, could be, let's forbid, uh, let's uh, force carpooling, it could have all of these answers. And then, even in a direct democracy system in which you're trying to solve a problem, it could be not a yes or no answer, but problem, many solutions, then voting for these solutions in one of these systems. And again, likely, it matters a lot which system you're picking to what kind of solutions you'll get. What do you want? The least objectionable ones? The ones that are favored a lot? It's a hard question. Other questions? Cool. Then you're free. Thanks for watching. Uh, attending. Thank you. Read up on these. Good luck in the debate.